Hey everyone, welcome to this special edition of Five on Fry with me, AJ Fry. I've noticed that a lot of people upload videos where they list their top five favorite films, and yeah, I could have done that, but I decided to focus on five films that truly changed my life. Here we go. I'm not the best person to tell you the story of the first time I saw Star Wars. Seriously, my parents took me to the theater to see Return of the Jedi when I was still in utero, so I've been a fan since long before I was born. In fact, when I was born, I was fluent in Jawa and Wookiee. Here's the thing though, I can't imagine anyone born after 1960 who wouldn't include Star Wars on a list of movies that changed their life. I mean, Star Wars changed the world. There's so much fantastic entertainment we have today that came about as a result of the success of Star Wars. I might not even have my job as a host on space were it not for Star Wars and Star Trek really paving the way for the popularity of sci-fi and fantasy entertainment. In fact, the next two movies on the list owe a big thank you to Star Wars, so naturally, it does start the list. There's no doubt that Luc Besson was inspired by Star Wars when he wrote his original draft of The Fifth Element when he was in high school. While we're actually 24 years apart in age, I'm sure our teenage selves would have gotten along great because I saw The Fifth Element when I was 14 and it changed my life. Back in 1997, the internet wasn't what it is today. There were no sites like YouTube where you could watch the trailer for a movie you were really excited about over and over again. So when my father took my brother Mickey and I to a fancy theater downtown to see it, I knew I was in for something special. Well, that and that Bruce Willis was the hero, the film was set in the future, and there was this beautiful woman with bright orange hair who kicked a lot of ass. Five minutes into the film and I realized just how special the movie was, and by the end of it, I was head over heels in love with Mila Jovovich, or more specifically, Lilu, the character that she played in the film. A week later, I'd met some other fans of the film online, and together we were planning on creating an unofficial Fifth Element Quake 2 mod. We never finished the mod, but this was my first memory of connecting with other people in the digital space because of our shared passion for a film and our shared passion for creating Creativity. It was the first time in my life I'd experienced how fandom can really connect people who are otherwise worlds apart. As for the film, it's really hard to put a pin on just exactly what made the movie so much fun for me, but to try to sum it up, it was everything I'd seen before and loved done in a beautifully original way. A perfect combination of familiarity and originality. By way of example, here's some film trivia for you. The main protagonist, Corbin Dallas, and the antagonist, Zorg, never actually share the screen or any dialogue. Don't believe me? Watch the movie and keep track of all the times that Gary Oldman and Bruce Willis talk? The answer is zero. And if your answer to the question, how many times have you watched The Fifth Element is also zero, well, you need to get on changing that right away. The Matrix was released in 1999 when I was just 16 years old. I wore dark clothes, a trench coat, Doc Martens, and sunglasses. The new millennium was around the corner, the World Wide Web was changing the way we communicated, my favorite band was Rage Against the Machine, and I'd listen to their music while building computers and coding websites. I loved technology and was actively using it to ask the world to guide me to fulfillment in a society I didn't feel like I belonged to. I was at the peak of my teenage angst against society and its bullshit expectations for me to fit in and to be a good little automaton student at school. Who am I? Why am I here? What should I do with my life? Who made all these rules and expectations and how can I fight the system? Those weren't just the internal thoughts of Neo at the start of the movie, they were my thoughts and I was sharing them on my website, back before social media was a thing and only weirdos posted their personal thoughts on the internet. With that accurate image of who I was, can you imagine how f***ing awesome watching The Matrix on the big screen was for me? Before the movie was even over, I'd already decided it was the greatest movie ever, but then the icing on the cake, the final moments of the film. It was as though the Wachowskis had used some kind of Matrix-like device to extract information from my subconscious. The film ends with Neo delivering the following statement. I'm gonna show them a world without you. A world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries. A world where anything is possible. Then, perfectly cued as Neo blasts off into the sky, the song Wake Up by Rage Against the Machine kicks in. That moment, it was like my identity had an orgasm. Sorry for that visual. Anyway, I walked out of the theater feeling like it was okay to be me, and I was inspired to bring that same message to other people if I ever got the chance. The first time I ever saw Old Boy is one of my favorite movie-going stories. I was walking down the street with my roommate and comedy partner Dave back in 2003, and this lady walks up to us and offers us these vouchers for tickets to a movie that night. The vouchers were essentially little movie posters, and below the title Old Boy it said, presented by Quentin Tarantino. We didn't have any plans, so we decided if this Korean movie was good enough for Quentin Tarantino, it was good enough for us. 
and it was. It destroyed all of our expectations. If you've seen the movie, you understand what I'm talking about, and if you haven't, or if you've only just heard about Old Boy thanks to this video, well then you've got as much information as I did going to see it, and that's exactly the right amount. I don't want to spoil anything, but I will add this one bit. Before seeing Old Boy, I thought jaw-dropping was just a saying. I'd never experienced a moment where I went, but that happened during Old Boy, and that's how it changed my life. I've watched it numerous times since, and I love it just as much every time. And make sure you see the original Korean version of Old Boy. Spike Lee did a commendable job remaking it for North American audiences, but he sure didn't match the brilliance of the original. Okay, so watching this movie certainly didn't change my life, but getting cast in American Pie, The Naked Mile, sure did. At the time I auditioned for it back in 2005, I was still in a sketch troupe with Dave and Ian who I met at comedy college, and the first year of working together was great, but by the time I got to audition for American Pie, I was really looking for any opportunity to escape. I was so poor that I was doing barter hours at the Second City, handing out flyers on street corners just to be able to afford taking classes. My parents were sending me money for food now and then, and I had an unspoken arrangement with my roommate Dave. His his mom didn't ask for rent money and I cleaned up after him, let him lead our troupe and be the head writer for our sketch comedy web series. Getting cast as Skinny Drinking Contestant, yep, that was the character's name, uh, proved to be exactly the opportunity to escape that I was looking for. It also really boosted my self-esteem as everyone was complimentary and really supportive. Even Pete Zedlacker, a stand-up comic that I admired and looked up to, uh, who was playing a police officer in the film, seemed to think that I had talent. Dave often made me feel like I couldn't be funny without him and here were a bunch of working professionals who appreciated my performance. Yes, it does feel a bit weird to call it a performance because all I had to do was say a few lines and then projectile vomit onto a woman's chest before passing out, but I committed to that, guys. And I also earned about $3,000, and like I said, that's all I needed to move out on my own into a one-bedroom apartment just down the hall from Dave. So I found myself in a new apartment and ready to take my newfound freedom and confidence and apply myself to finding new opportunities, and that's when I got an email asking me to come in to audition for YTV. And that's a bigger story for another time. But you can see how important this particular movie was for my life story. Sadly, it was also important for someone else's life story in that it ended theirs. This is true. Two college students in the States who had watched the drinking contest scene that I appeared in I actually tried to recreate it at a bar, and one of them died of alcohol poisoning. What a bizarre twist of fate. The B-movie that offered me such opportunity in life also led to the end of all opportunities for someone else's life. Man, I've really got to go watch The Matrix again. I want to escape this illogical world we live in. So that's all for this edition of Five on Fry. Thanks for watching. Follow me on social media, hit subscribe for future videos, and I'll see you in the future.